Welcome back to our June 12 Democracy Day special. We're looking at Nigeria 28 years after. You can also watch us live on our new YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. You can be part of the conversation by calling us or sending a WhatsApp message via the numbers that you see on your screen. Now, let's get into the conversation. We're talking Nigerian youth now. The youth in the country are yet to become influential in politics 60 years after independence, 28 years after June 12, 1993 election, and 22 years after the return to civil government. The average age of presidents upon assumption of office since 1999 is 60 years. Many current government, government appointees, especially ministers, are politicians who are above 50 and who have been in the system for long. The not too young to run act signed in 2018 could change things, but skeptics say electoral reforms and de-emphasis on money politics are still needed to have more young people in politics and governance. A media executive and politician, Jide Adediron, is here to discuss youth participation in politics in the last 28 years. Now, the, uh, Jide Adediron is also the lead visioner of Lagos for Lagos Movement. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Great. Well, um, it's a breath of fresh air every time I have to talk to a young person about politics. Okay. Even though these days you see more and more young people get involved in politics. But... Um, I'm going to start by asking the question that everybody's afraid to ask. Why do young people complain more than they act when it comes to being involved in politics as opposed to complaining about the government or whoever is in leadership? Okay, all right, thank you. Let's first look at um, youth in politics. Um, so who are these youth? We'll break it into two. I'll tell you that presently, as we have, um, INEC data of 84 million registered voters in Nigeria has them um, 51% between the age of 18 and 35. And between that age of 18 and 50 is about 80%. Okay. Um, yes, you do have youth participating in politics, but for wrong reason. The youth that participated, that is participating in politics, are tools in the hands of you know, um, the older the politicians. <laughs> exactly. Um, if you go to the grassroots, you see a huge number of youth really participating, but as tools. So the other part is the one you see on Twitter, sitting there, rant and talk about um, um, policies just to have their say. But having our way will be all of us to involve in the process at the grassroots. Then for those that are participating, because they, they, they're truly participating, um, at the grassroots, are the ones you see going everywhere, you know, running errands for the older generation who have refused to leave that corridor of power. So what is the difference? The difference is somebody needs to go down there and speak sense into our heads and say, you know what, enough of being tools in the hands of these people. Because when they're done, what you see them do next is to get their own children to also occupy that space and continue to use us mm. as tools. Now, the real problem is in the huge number of some of us who should know and what we do is to sit on social media every time, all the time, you know, rant about the process. We like to go out there to protest and forgetting that protest, of course, is good, is our right, but we can only have our say with that. We can't have our way in process. So hmm. what we need to do now is to have our way. How do we have our way? We have that huge number is to convert our numerical strength, you know, uh, by populating the political landscape. If it remains the game of numbers, we'll, we'll get there, you know, um, populate that, that, that trade and see how we can actually uh, get this power to ourselves. We're going to talk more on that, especially your own involvement too. Uh, but we have joining us virtually a lawyer, author, and executive director of Girls Just Want to Run. And that's uh, Nafisa Atiku Adijua. Good afternoon, Nafisa. Good afternoon. Okay. Thank uh, you, Nafisa, we'll, we'll, for joining us. Uh, we will get to you, but while we're still at it, let's come back. To let you. me let me just quickly through this salvo. Um, looking at um, what someone said recently, in particular, Pastor Tunde Bakari, he said something during a conference. He said, 
the problem that we are facing now was caused by a set of youths talking about the military uh, leadership <laughs> when, they, when they took over governance in their 30s, you know, and uh, that it would take the youth to bring us out of the problem. Now, irrespective of where you stand on his uh, statement, how do we drive that process to see youth bringing us out of you know, what we can call gerontocracy in terms of the 60 years and above being in governance. How do we change the dynamics? I, I just said it. Um, what we need to do is to come together. First, um, we need to take the battle to the stronghold of the status quo, which is the grassroots. Don't let us deceive ourselves. You can't win election on Twitter. You can't, if the current electoral act is in anything to go by, you have to be physically, you know, at the, at the polling unit uh, to to cast your vote to win. Then again, um, if you look at the, the numbers, the, the politicians know where they get their numbers at the end of the day. If you continue to run to Twitter, they don't even listen to you. But every election period, they know where to go, and they get that number and deliver whoever they want to deliver. Look at um, the answers protest. Lagos was the epicenter, really. Right. OK, so uh, immediately after that, uh, the, the protest, there was a by-election and the same lucky axis. Hmm. Look at what happened. APC shouldn't have near winning that election at all. You know, not only did APC actually win that election, but with wide margin. So what are we saying? So for us to get this right, we first need to take the battle to their stronghold and create the necessary implosion at that level. But when they have this apathy that their votes do not count, that when they try to vote, the thing is being rigged, I'm not putting any party in contest now. So where do we build that trust for them to come in? I mean, you, you just hit um, the nail um, at the right place. Let, let, me, let me take you back to very recent um, scenarios here in Lagos. I mean, Lagos where we have the supposed leader of all Democrats. You know, under his watch, they had this primary election, you know, for local government election. And nothing like primary. At the end of the day, somebody sat somewhere and wrote out the 57 names of local government chairman, and they were just turning it out. Not even saying, okay, this man that we have picked scored this total number of votes. You know, they went in all the wards where they're supposed to be having an election, disrupted the whole thing with thugs. Yes, they, they continuously been using that to scare us away from this, from this trade. But look, for us, we've, we've determined that we're not, we not going to given, we will confront it. You know, if we have that huge number in a general election where they don't have control over, we can actually rest of this power. So all we need to do is to step down from this our social media, Twitter, everything, and eat the grassroots. You know, um, there are what we call political wars. There are zones. You need to be physically present to know where this, some of us don't even know where they vote in their area. But in Lagos for Lagos government, there, there's something that we have done. We have created, you know, a, a committee that would assist people on Twitter to say, you know what, um, continual voter registration is coming on the 28th of June. We'll assist you to get registered. If you need to move your PVC from your previous address to new address, we'll also assist you. These are some of the things that we are doing to bring us to ensure that we take um, this very seriously. Enough of protest because we can only have our say with that. Having our way is to get involved, involved in the process. All right, let's go to Nafisa. Uh, Nafisa, yes, of course, you are a, a young person. Uh, congratulations are in order. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, let me, let me just quickly talk about, pick up from where he stops. He's saying that um, we need to go to the grassroots. Now, I, I'll paint a scenario. In 2019, there was a young Nigerian from the southeast who wanted to run for presidency. And he yeah. came from the UK. And... Uh, my, the question I asked him was, where is your root? Where is your backing, your structure? Do you have a structure in Nigeria? Do the people in the, the, your local government or in your ward know you? How well are you known? How long, when was the last time you came to Nigeria? And these questions were pertinent because he said that you need to start from the local government. But we see a lot of people wake up and want to join politics. We see them run for governorships. We see them run for Senate and House of Assemblies, but we do not see people, young people vying for those smaller offices, which should be, you know, the starting point. Can I ask you why? 
Well, to be honest, I think I think it was a lack of knowledge and understanding of the political landscape in the country. So, you know, this, um, while I want to say that the theory has been overflowed, I don't necessarily think so. So, usually young people, when they come into the political landscape, when they come into the political arena and say that they want to get involved in politics, they want to, you know, vote, they want to run for office, etc. We have not necessarily had the kind of tutelage or mentorship that we should have had in this whole new political ecosystem. It's just recently that programs have started, young people have tried to infiltrate the system. Because you know what? Young people have been used as an instrument to win elections, as touts, as you know, mobilizers, not exactly as stakeholders in the system. Young people right now are not seen as stakeholders in a democracy. So there was no avenue of tutelage or mentorship to say, if you want to get involved, this is how you should get involved. You need to go to the grassroots, you need to understand your local government, you need to understand the stakeholders in your local government. Those things were, how would I put it, those vital pieces of information were not given to them. So of course, somebody that doesn't know or understand how the political ecosystem is. We literally just come in from America and just start to, you know, go for governorship or go for a house of rest position because they don't really necessarily understand how it works here. How do you, you really do you, need to, because to be honest, democracy is about the people. I'm and so it's sorry to speak about over the people you. at the local government because those are the ones that are mostly connected to the people. So I think it's more of an issue of, I think it's a knowledge deficit. Well, I'm so sorry, I have to come in there. Because one, they haven't exactly been involved in the system. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to ask, out of curiosity, do you necessarily have to be running for office for you to get involved in politics as a young person? Should that be the ultimate goal? Because I see that happening all the time. Every time we say young people in politics, then you hear they're not too young to run uh, and this and that. Because everybody who's a politician does not necessarily have to run for office, right? So for our young people, mm -hmm. how do we change that mindset? Because I'm always curious, must you want to have or hold an office for you to get involved in any political party or be part of one? Well, like I said, two things. I think it's more, once again, it's more of a knowledge defici deficit. When you think of politics in Nigeria, you instinctively think of running for office or holding an office. Number two, when you think of politics in Nigeria, you want to be placed at a particular position where you can now be relevant and influence policies, you know, ecosystems, so that things can be better or worse. It depends on the motive of the person. So those are two things, a knowledge deficit. When, um, sorry, I run an organization called Girls Just Want to Run, and part of one of the things that we did was to show, show people that, look, you don't necessarily need to run. Oh, okay, we, we have, have a, a bit of network issue. There, uh, but let me quickly sir. continue with GD. I, I, I'm looking at uh, some funny st statistics here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, we have the likes of Governor Yaya Bello, who was 40 years when he became a governor. We have a, a Bankole who was not only young, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, but he was even a single man. And we've had um, quite a lot of a thoughts about who the... was 30. Exactly. In his 30s when you when even he was talk governor. about... Um, uh, when, when, when you talk about Dino Melaye, these were people who were in their 30s when they were in politics. But they, were they the true replicas, the representatives of the kind of youth we are talking about. I'll leave you to answer that. <laughs> Where, um, you see, you, you can't judge everybody. Mine is just numbers. a question. I'm just saying, <laughs> um, if you look at a bulk of the people um, ruling us today, they're in their 60s, above 60s and other. Can we then say that all of them in that category are Bad. Like those that we have there? So. I think it would be very unfair if you, if you generalize and say, okay, you want to pick one or two persons that have had the opportunity to, to govern and say, okay, that is the, what, what um, our youth represent. But again, uh, you have to give it to these guys, um, whether you like it or not. They've been able to throw their hat in the ring and they've been able to tell us that, yes, we can, uh, if, if they could. There is nothing wrong in all of us in our early 40s and you know, late 30s to say, okay, we can, we can also do, do the same. So, um, 
we can't totally say that is what Nigerian youth actually represent. And these guys you mentioned as well, they've had their own positive contributions to, to the political landscape. You, you have to give it to them. So the same way you can't, in its entirety, rubbish the, the people, you know, um, majority of those that are governing us today, we, is in their 60s, 70s. So uh, you should strike some, some balance. balance. That is not, we, we're saying that we can do things differently. This, this, is, this is 2021. Let's take Lagos, for instance. You know, for the past how many years, 22 years now, we've been running what we call Lagos Master Plan of 1998 in, 20, in, in 2021. Is there anything wrong with that? We, 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 of course, a lot is wrong. Something, a lot has changed between 1998 and now. This is a digital age. Educate us, okay. please. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you, this is a digital age. And we have, okay, we have a government in Lagos who has spent two years in office with no single signature project that you can point at and say, okay, this is it. Humble Day that we sent out last you know, el election year um, gave us at least three... Who sent out? <laughs> three projects that you can okay. point out in its two years. There is a Majara flyover. There is a Bulegba flyover. You know, there is the, the Osho, the Tamina. In, in, in two years, you can point to something. So this is how bad we've had it. And you now see um, the, the supposed leader of the Democrat, you know, came up recently and just for us to discover an integrity deficit you know, in, in the process of, of their own primary election, internal election within the members. So if they can treat us like that as members, how are they going Sorry, to Sorry, are you a member of APC? Of course I'm a member of APC, but mm -hmm. you can call us the new entrant. We are, we are in APC to change the old orders. We are in APC to inject new energies fresh ideas. I don't want us to make it about a political party, but <laughs> I, 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 let, 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 me, let me push you a bit further. Um, we keep putting new wine in old wine skin. And let me explain what I mean by that. Mm. We're asking young people to join these political parties that we see as uh, run by the same people that we think have a stereotypical mindset mm. of how Nigeria should continuously be run. And we want these same people to mentor these young people mm. as to the modus operandi of how political parties run. Mm. How are we certain that their mindsets will not also be um, somewhat configured to start thinking and acting like the same? Because you said something mm -hmm. about the Dino Malayas and all of these people, that they have done some positives, but of course they have their problems. What is, what is the guarantee that there's not going to be that tra same transference of spirits for the want of a better term? Okay, let me, let, me, let me tell you the mistake we're making here as, as Nigerians. Um, we've forgotten that there is nothing in the three-letter words, APC and PDP. It's all about the people that you have in, in that circle. So every election, is just like what is playing out now, you see the opposition party coming up to accuse the, the ruling, ruling party, party of not doing enough. And you now see the same set of people, you know, to leaving the to the new party. And th so it's still about the people. But what we are seeing is that if we, as young people, you know, use our numerical strength to populate, you know, um, the party, because don't let us deceive so ourselves. All options will fall on don't let us deceive <laughs> ourselves. If the current electoral hat is still anything to go by, come 2023, PDP, APC will still be the party to beat. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. When, you know, our colleagues came up with YPP, use blah, 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 political party, and they said, okay, we're, after NSAS, we're going to register this, we're going to get this done. Now. For some of us who actually understand the nitty-gritty of this street, just sit back and say, okay, watch what is going to happen. In three days, three days after, online, they registered new NYPP, YPPN, to frustrate that process. Hmm. Nothing more. I'm coming back to that. That's a very sensitive. Let me go to Nafisa. Uh, I, um, Marianne asked you a question, and I want to stay on that. If you look at uh, what a lot of young people who are very cerebral, which we are looking at to be in governance, a lot of them would prefer to wait for appointment rather than getting elected. The reason is simple. They feel they don't have the deep pocket to run this election. Uh, do you, don't you think the strategy needs to change? Because if you really want to be in charge of issues like this, you also need to get elected. Yes, definitely. I think that strategies need to change in order to confront this problem that we have. We all know that elections in Nigeria are expensive. 
very, very expensive. And until we get to the stage where we can say that we can enact system structures, policies that would be able to curtail how expensive our elections are, we need to do what we have to do. Um, I always like um, quoting this example. I know totally different countries. That's um, Alexandra Ocasio Cortez. She is con she is now representing her constituency in the American House of Reps. But my point is not not necessarily in the structure and system of their country. She was against um, I think a particular her opponent rather had been in the seat for about two to three terms and of course had deep pockets. She was simply a bartender and she was running to represent her constituency. She marshaled the resources, basically the human resources of the people who were helping her to com campaign and her constituency. If we do need to get young people elected, like um, the other speaker said, we need to be united in what we want as a country. And we need to help crowdfund, push, draw on our collective pockets and human manpower resources, etc., to put the people that we know who deliver the kind of dividends of democracy that we need in this country. So electing the right people into office is a collective effort, a collective effort of not just the person dipping their hands into their own pocket to sponsor themselves to run, but for all of us that really know that we want to, you know, have a better country. It's one of the things we tell the young women who come and say, oh, how do we get involved in politics? I don't want to run for office. You don't want to run for office. Okay, help someone else to campaign. Donate to their campaign donate merchandise money what else donate because honestly this country is for us and if we do not unite you know to push the people that we need we need there then we won't head anywhere so definitely we need to have a different strategy the young people need to have a different strategy to be able to you know push this country forward okay. um nafisa i just want to push you a little bit on that and then i will come back to yeah. Adiru. um when you say that we need to crowdfund, but that also boils down to, because if I want to push, for example, my colleague Kayade to run for, uh, let's say, Keja local government mm -hmm. area, um, I have to be certain yeah. that the people that live on his street trust him. The people in his word yeah. um, have been able to test that he is a man of dignity and he's trustworthy. So again, it takes me back to the question that I asked you earlier. We if people do not know you, why would they want to invest in you as a person? So what are young people doing to educate, young people like you, doing to educate other young people as to why they need to be back to their grassroots and they need to not just wait to run for office, but do more than just sit around and wait for someone to pay their way into office? Mm. Hey, there we that's a very very strong term very very strong term okay but yes what are we doing what are young people like ourselves trying to tell other young people to do so yes going to your grassroots is something like i said it's becoming more of a mantra for those who want to now enter in, into the political forum for example i was at the i was selected as one of the participants for the gen Z women leadership political leadership training last year i think late last year i know mean, one of the things that they kept emphasizing was Go back to your grassroots, compete for your elder, um, for your um, as a council of your ward, compete for your local government chairman. Go there, execute um, community projects, do what you need to do. You see, one thing, and it's also basically one thing that we keep on telling young women when we tell them go to your grassroots and you know do projects, do community projects, they start to think, oh, I just graduated from university, I don't have a job, or even if I have a job, it's paying me something that I cannot exactly use to execute the things that i need to do that i would want to do for my community so how do i need to handle this and how we, we basically open their mind up to opportunities such as collaboration you know you can partner with this person you can partner with this organization you can partner with this ngo say you want to put um how do i put it a well you want to put a community a pharmacy you want to put a community health center these are things write a proposal because we need to be, like I said, we need to have new strategies. So you need to be innovative when you know that you don't have so much, but there's so much you want to do. Put a proposal together. Partner with your friends. Partner with organizations. Partner with NGOs. These are things that really, really happen in real life. And then put this proposal towards them and get your resources to go back to your community and do what you need to do. Because you're right. Once your community is able to attest, even before you got elected, 
that you help them to build up the system. You know, that's what we call structure. When we say political parties have structure, it's not necessarily the buildings or the facilities that they put there. The structure refers to the people who can attest to your diligence, your persistence, and your selfless leadership within that geographical setting. Perfect. So it's something Perfect. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, be, be, before we continue with this conversation, for those who are just joining us, uh, this is our Democracy Day special and you can be part of the conversation. We want you to join the conversation. So you can send us a WhatsApp message. Our numbers are on your screen. Uh, you can call if you want to call us 0909-840-8408. And you can send us a WhatsApp message on 081-401-4442. Four, two. Please do not call the WhatsApp okay. line. Just send us a WhatsApp message. We're going to go straight to the messages. I, I just want to read quickly two messages. I know that these messages came in earlier on. Uh, somebody here, Solomon here says, our economy, uh, our economic downturn is a reflection of our confused public policy that has promoted control rather than competition. Thank you, Solomon, for your message. And we have another one here. Uh, he was reacting to a daily run where... He says, Nigerian leaders have really truncated a lot of things. How can they scrap history from our academic calendar? Um, he said, I asked someone about June 12 and he couldn't give me anything tangible. That, that of course, says a lot about us Absolutely. as a people. And probably as we respond to that, uh, let's also look at the issue I asked her, and that has to do with being strategic, waiting for appointment, and they don't have deep pocket. You are already in there. Is it because... You have deep pocket, or how do you intend to navigate this? I haven't said you have deep pocket, but probably you do. How do you intend to build this structure she talked about? When she talked about structure, she's talking about mobilizing people. She's talking about how to get people committed to the course you were talking about. And trust me, most times they will ask you, what do you have for us? Yeah, um, I think um, Nafisat was actually right. And, and I want to say to you that, like, for instance, in the last six years when we started this movement, uh, we know that um, first, uh, before we get in there, I mean, for people to look at your side, uh, you need to uh, do some level of empowerment, you know, at the grassroots level before they can see in you. Uh, but more importantly, there is something that we haven't tapped, and I, I, I said it earlier, which is our numerical strength as youth. In Lagos, for instance, we have over 65% of our population which happens to be youth, that, that's about 13 million people. Imagine if we contribute 1,000 naira, you know, the amount of money that can come, come to. But they've been using that to scare us away from coming into mm. the system. You don't have money, you know, they will kill you, they have thugs and all of this. But it has gotten to a point where we need to confront our, our fears I, I mean, squarely. And uh, it is by so doing, you now realize that over 90% of what we fear wouldn't even happen, you know. And I will say to you that in the last six years, some looked at us like, what were they doing? Is it crazy? What, what, what does he think he is? But today, the story has changed. Now, they, 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 they are now seeing believability. They're seeing that it, it is possible for us to actually get this done. So consistency is, is one of the things that we need to really get in there. It's just like any business you want to do, just hang in there. One day is going to pay off. So for six years, we've been going everywhere. We've been telling Lagosians that, look, you don't need to wait until somebody will introduce your governor to you and say, I have chosen so so person. And all of you will not be looking at it. We have seen it before. What does it do? I mean, like, who is like he? that. Who is he? But you can know somebody who wants to be I mean, it, there's a difference between being picked and you expressing your can do ability. So say, yes, I can. You first have to believe in yourself before anybody can even say, okay, let's look at him twice. But what we've had in the last how many years in Lagos is just mere coronation. Somebody just come and pronounce, I've chosen X, Y, Z, all of us follow. No, that would change in 2023. But we do know that is not a trade we are going to venture into in six months, seven months of that election when everybody comes in. That is why we started years back, because we know this is not your regular um, election. It's something we want to shift, and that thing has to shift. But before we do that, we need to take the battle down there, talk to people, tell them, you know what, you don't need to wait until you start looking at or trying to know who that person is. For the first time in Lagos, and this is what Lagos for Lagos is all about. We want to 
elect an independent governor. The one that wouldn't require second level approval before you can get things done in Lagos. <laughs> you know, that that's, is that is that's huge. That is what this is all about. Of course, we need a governor that you talk to and spontaneously will say yes, I will. Not the one that will say okay, let me get back to you. That's what we need. We need a governor that will have hundred percent, you know, um, control over the finances of Lagos. Today, Lagos is the richest state, Abi, in the entire federation. Okay, That's let, only let, let's take the conversation beyond Lagos now. Okay, now, Fisa, I, I, I don't know whether you agree with some of the things he has raised. Uh, looking at Godfrey in Nigerian politics, some have argued, and I think you've seen that in other climes too, that these exist in different parts of the world. But it seems we are not close to coming out of that, uh, you know, that peak that we found ourselves. Hello? Sorry, please, could you take that question again? I missed the first half of what you said. Okay, basically, we're talking about Godfatherism, how do we come out of it? How do we have leadership that we can ask questions directly and they will give us response? Leadership that we truly chosen from the primaries up to being uh, the leader at the general election? Did you get that? All right. Yes, I got you clearly. So, well, that's a tough question because, you know, the way our entire system is rigged, Godfatherism right now, if you need to progress up the political steps, you need a godfather or a godmother, somebody that will literally take you and say that I have crowned you my successor, I have crowned you the person that will take over after me. Now, I think when I started this conversation, I said that right now young people are not seen as stakeholders in a democracy Rather, they are seen as instruments to win elections. We need, and a lot of young people, because a lot of young people still have that mentality that, oh, this party, this APC, this PDP is yours, or Gao, we are just here. Whatever you tell us to do, we will do. I know, because I have heard this thing from a youth leader in this country. And if you continue with that mindset, if a youth leader has that mindset, what do you think the rest of the followers will have? It's the same mindset. We need to move from the part where we are, where we say that we are instruments, so we are helpless, to the part where we basically reclaim our power as stakeholders in our democracy. And we will tell them that us young people, we are stakeholders in this democracy. So when you bring something to the table and we know that it is not favorable for us, we will push back. Like the other speakers also said, our numerical strength. But the problem with us is that we are not united as regards and. To be honest, the issue of our unity is something that we need to solve. It's, 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 a, it's a really deep problem and it goes down to the fabric of, you know, uniting this country, our history, our background. That's the reason why we're not united. If we don't solve those problems, we will never be united and we will never accomplish anything. So, the issue of Godfatherism, it's, we need to move from actually having leaders that are chosen for us to actually choosing our leaders for ourselves. But we can't do that unless we own the system. And, by, and before you own the system, you have to integrate the system. That means you have to join the political parties. And that is one thing that I feel like young people are not necessarily doing en masse. They are not uniting to join political parties where they know they think they can alter the structure, alter the system, mm -hmm. and achieve the dividends of democracy. Let it be the one with the best committee. And this is an idealistic scenario. Let it be with the one that has the best committee you know, get the ticket. That's idealistic and we haven't gotten there yet. But I feel like this is what we can do. First of all, we need to understand that we are stakeholders. Then we need to integrate the system and then we need to own the system. Then we cannot afford to push back with the amount of, how I put it, unity and then structure that young people will be able to attain. And finally, in a sentence before we go, Mr. Dediran, in closing, there are lots of young people who are watching, a lot of them are responding, a lot of them are saying, the things that they want, but what about what they can do to make those things they want come true? <clears throat> well, I, I don't know if you allow me to still restrict myself in Lagos, but <laughs> 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 it appears it's a it national general. discourse. But let me, let's make it general. Um, I think my, my, my parting word here would be um, to call on all of us, actually. Um, just like an officer said, the only problem we have is that we've not been able to see that um, we should come together 
uh, unlike our leaders that you see today, irrespective of their party lineage, you still see them, you know, fraternizing with mm -hmm. each other, marrying their children with to each other. Mm -hmm. But in our own case, they've succeeded mm -hmm. in dividing us, and then we just go our ways. But it, it, it's time for us to really come together and see how we can drop whether or not you're a Muslim or I'm a Christian or you're of the Igbo instruction and come together by so doing. Okay. Our numerical strength can really count. But um, if we don't do that, we'll remain slaves forever. Thank you so much. Our Lajide Adediron is the lead visionary Lagos for Lagos movement. Uh, you'll find out what that means in the coming days. Thank you for your time. And, and thank you, Nafisa. Adij, I think you just corrected us. It's Nafisa Abubakar Adejuwa. Um, no, it's actually Nafisa Atiku Adejuwa. Uh -huh. Adejuwa. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much for being part of the conversation. Well, before we uh, go on the break, in 2018, President Muhammad Buhari declared June 12 as Nigeria's new democracy day. It was part of the compensation for the injustice that was done to the winner of the presidential election held on that day in 1993. As part of our June 12 special series, Osaroge Ogbon examines the role played by some of the key actors in the struggle who are now late. Mm -hmm. 